I immediately dropped it onto the skirt. I made sure to stick my butt directly into the camera. That's a very important step. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but we're gonna keep going. Okay, is anyone else weirdly picky like me? I'm not picky about most things. You ask me where to go out to eat, well, honestly, every restaurant that I've ever heard of or been to has just fled out of my mind, so I don't care. What's your favorite music or food? There's too many to choose from. I like a lot of them. I'm just not a picky person, normally. The one thing I'm picky about is fabric patterns. If there's a fabric pattern that is even the tiniest bit, not as I imagined, I'm probably not gonna buy it. Lately, I've been trying to think of a way that was cheap and affordable, that's the same thing, but doable for me and also in a certain amount of time. I know there are incredibly expensive machines where you can print your own fabric, print your own fabric, print your own pattern. I know that you can embroider by an embroidery machine, also very expensive. <laughs> then my mother actually actually reminded me that a lot of us when we were kids learned how to paint with potatoes. Like you could stamp with the potatoes and use the potato as your stamp. I think I'm over explaining myself at this point. Childlike wonder filled my brain and I had to try it. Some of my inspiration, I definitely wanted to make a kirtle inspired dress, which is like a Renaissance undergown, Baroque undergown. It comes from several different time periods. And also there was this specific dress from I believe Huckleberry clothing that had this really pretty mushroom print that I thought was really cute. I'm not really a mushroom person though. I'd rather just do a fall leaf motif. So those two were kind of my main inspirations for this project. But now that I've explained all of that, I will see you at the end to talk about a few of my thoughts. But let me show you how I made this dress. Okay, so first up was trying to figure out the pattern I wanted to use. I didn't end up using everything that I designed here, but if I don't show it, I don't think other parts will make as much sense. So in the end, at this point, I wanted five separate stamps, a small acorn, a eucalyptus branch, and three different types of fall leaves. Welcome to day one. So this is the pattern I'm going off of. I really love two things. I think the bodice is already a pretty good shape. I'm probably going to exaggerate center front a little bit more. And then the skirt pieces are really like voluminous. You can kind of see that a little bit more here and on the ground. I'm going to do extra skirt panels to where it closes at the front. Pretty good starting point. Let me take you for a tour <laughs> of how I'm gonna be cutting this out. These are the skirt pieces. So you cut out two of each of these and I think taking this back piece because it's a little bit larger and wider and then mirroring that over here will make enough skirt pieces that it can go all the way around me. I would have really loved to have doubled these skirt pieces. I just don't know if that's possible because I do need a little bit of room over here to cut out the rest of my lining. But over here on this like king sized pillow, I have most of my bodice pieces and then for the rest of it, I'm gonna use it for my lining because the top is going to be self-lined and probably have some interfacing in it to give it some structure. We'll see how this all works out. The second I lay out fabric, my dog thinks I made him a new dog bed. <laughs> Once everything was cut out, I added interfacing to all the bodice pieces and sewed it together. There were some slight fit changes I needed to make, like taking the shoulders in and adding a dart to the chest area, but other than that, it all went pretty smoothly. I next moved on to the skirt and I loved the volume. I'm definitely going to use these skirt pattern pieces again in the future. I also wanted to run some tests on my fabric with the paint. For each swatch, I did half paint and half fabric medium so that the paint would actually go and stay on the fabric correctly. After letting the paint dry, I washed and dried the swatch and stitched over it to make sure everything would turn out okay. Okay. 
I then woke up super early one morning. Sorry if the lighting is bad because of that. I printed out all of the things I had drawn. I taken the pieces down to four at this point. I have a sculptural project coming up in the future. So I bought some sculpting tools and I used that to start carving my stamps onto the potato. The potato was definitely harder to carve into than I thought, but eventually I got the hang of it and started to find the process quite calming. I then tested each of the stamps on a piece of paper to make sure they looked the way I wanted them to. I then repeated all of that until all four were done. I felt like each varied in quality, but I was pretty proud of them overall. <laughs> then it was time to start stamping. I laid out a tarp and then flattened the skirt to the best of my ability, and I made sure to stick my butt directly into the camera. That's a very important step. <laughs> I have this little tester swatch, and I just painted it on with the fabric medium, and then I washed it, and then the last thing I did was sew it, just to make sure that it could do everything. And I think it turned out really good. I'm not using this color. I'm using these three colors plus a brown. The only thing I saw was this. I don't know if I'd done that while I was painting or not, but so far I think the test went pretty well. I started with my yellow leaves, mixing that bright yellow with white to both mellow it out and lighten the color. And after doing my first stamp, I immediately dropped it onto the skirt. And this is why I start at the back, just in case. <laughs> I then tried painting over the stamp to make it stand out more, and this was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that, and it makes it look weird, but I continued trying to place the stamp in all different directions to make it look like leaves were actually falling. After all the yellow leaves were down, I decided to go in a slightly different direction. I was afraid that with all the different colors and this more crafty, let's say, look, it would just all be too much. So I thought what I would do is just do three stamps and keep in this kind of analogous yellow green region. So I did the next color, which was a darker green, and then used the same stamp for a lighter green that almost matched the base dress color. It was just like a little bit lighter. I also figured out that the best way to do these stamps without needing to fix anything with a paintbrush was to do this rocking motion that you can see me doing here. I felt like the dress still needed something at this point, so I took a page from that Huckleberry clothing dress and just added some tiny off-white dots all over. After about five to six hours of working on this step alone, the skirt and top were finally all stamped and painted. Excuse you, why are you on my skirt? Excuse you. Excuse you, what are you doing? Ta-da! I'm not sure how I feel about it but we're gonna keep going. So if you watched my Edwardian overalls video, you'll know that my parents and I set up a bird sanctuary in their backyard, and I've been trying my best to film all the birds that I see. And since the fall, we've had so many new types of birds, so I thought I'd show you some more of the bird sanctuary in the fall.
Getting to see all these birds' different personalities is something I didn't even consider when I started filming them, and it just brings me so much joy. I can't wait to see what the bird sanctuary looks like in winter, and now back to the dress. I kept center front of the skirt open because I'm lacing at center front, but I now turned both sides in twice so the inside seam would be finished but still open towards the top. I then gathered the skirt and attached it to the bodice. For a moment, I seriously considered keeping the front open, but I decided to stick to the original plan. I then hand stitched the lining to the skirt and bodice seam. I wanted to try spiral lacing instead of the X lacings that I usually do, and honestly, I love it so much. The last step was to hem the skirt, which took forever with all the volume, but it is finally time to show you the final result. That is the kirtle slash dress. When I first painted it, um, I didn't love it, but honestly, <laughs> as I've been wearing it and like looking at it, it's grown on me to the point where I think I might love it. Yes, it kind of looks like a third grade class painted it, but I feel like that brings it a certain amount of charm. Someone, when they saw me in the dress, told me that the yellow leaves looked like duck feet. I haven't been able to get that out of my brain, but you know what? I love ducks. They're cute and they make cute sounds. I'm going to say that's, that's cute, cute and, I, and like I like it. It was uh, a lot of time. My back hurt for a pretty long time after sitting on the ground for hours and hours and hours, but I did enjoy the process. I thought it was very fun. I felt like my creative juices were getting to flow in just the right way. As far as the fit of the dress overall, I am very happy with it. Eventually I might hem it a little shorter, but as of right now, I actually love the amount of volume in the skirt. I'm really having a good time with that. So until I get bored of it, I'll just keep it at this length. The only downside to the fit, which means that the next time I use this pattern, I will probably need to make a mock-up Probably not gonna do that, but I should. I had to do like little pleats beside the arm's eye near the princess seam, which isn't great. You shouldn't have to do that when you have a princess seam, but you know, I don't think it shows too much, so it doesn't really bother me all that much. It's not perfect. There are some wobbly bits, but generally I'm pretty happy with this project. I actually don't know what my next project is going to be for the next time. I had some night core ideas. A lot of you guys said that my crochet dress that I made a while ago reminded you of night core, and I kind of want to do something with that. But I also have a couple of other ideas. We'll see which one my I, like excitement takes over with. That's gonna be it for me this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you had a good time. Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked this video. If you've watched a video of mine before, subscribing would really help. And I hope to see you back here next time. Bye. <laughs>